I wanted to start off and ask you, I mean, how how pissed off are you about Bridgerton? Because, like, I mean, I don't know, but, like, I mean, I, I saw the, the 11 minute short that you did, and obviously that was, you know, way before Bridgerton. And then, of course, Bridgerton came along and kind of, like, everyone was like, oh, you know, colorblind Regency Corps stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, do you harbor any, I don't want to say, I don't, I don't want to say any pissed off. I mean, obviously, I've just been trying to be funny but like i mean do you have any sort of i don't know resentment or anything about it how do you feel about it like i've kind of gone full circle right I think it's interesting you say pissed off because when it was announced of course i was a little bit frightened and a little bit worried you know like when shonda rhymes does anything you know it's going to be hugely massive and hugely successful and she's brilliant at what she does and i think what i was most worried about wasn't about the casting like the casting you know, other people had done it before me, other people had done it before them, like hopefully more people do it. I think what concerned me the most was it's the same 10 year period, you know? And I was like, ah, oh, the stories might be super similar. And you know, there is some parallels, it's matchmaking, it's Regency, it's, you know, all this sort of thing. Mm. But if anything, it just really, you know, made me really firm in making the movie I wanted to make. Yeah. You know, I really, and I, and I honestly, getting to shoot it in Ireland was like the biggest blessing in disguise because all our locations have become so unique to Malcolm's. And I think if we had shot the movie in London with Bridgerton, we would there would have been a lot of crossover and that would have been really, actually then I probably would have been pissed off. <laughs> but um, no, I think, you know, long story short, Netflix have a huge amount of money. Um, they marketed that show all around the world. So it kind of allowed a lot of people, I think, to know that there is this amazing genre that can be for them too. So full circle, I'm sure it's win-win for all. But yeah, it really was a full circle moment. Yeah, you had to come to All the things, you know? Yeah, yeah. I need your assistance. There is a gentleman, Mr. Malcolm. He humiliated me. No. I then found out he had a list. You have a list of qualifications for a bride. I would love for Mr. Malcolm to receive the comeuppance he deserves. Plus, it could be rather fun. It's interesting you mentioned um, Ireland as well. I actually grew up 10 minutes away from Castletown House. No way. Um, yeah, in Clane is where I'm from, yeah. And my wife actually used to play around the grounds of um, Castletown House and Barberstone Castle as well. So beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. Um, I'm wondering, I mean, like have has there been any kind of thought about I mean like look Castletown House as you probably know has a bit of a dark history in fact most kind of colonial kind of most of those kind of Regency houses in Ireland have a pretty dark history and when you have you know like Frida Pinto and Sope and all those you know was there any kind of I don't know was there any kind of discussion on set about the significance of all this or was it just a case of no we're doing like a romantic comedy we're not going to talk or we're not going to kind of engage with any of the i don't know the darker aspects of it like um i think first off i had to agree completely that our film doesn't do a deep dive into the and it shouldn't it doesn't have to you know into the colonial realities of yeah. the era and i think that the reality is that none of these film have films have done that historically yeah. And I think broader cultural representation has suffered as a consequence. But first and foremost, we have to remember that all of these movies are on some level of fantasy. Yeah. I was looking for a Palladian Georgian yeah. house, you know, and that Castle Town really fit that bill. Yeah. So I just I honestly didn't do too much digging into the, you know the the real houses part yeah yeah why would you i was looking for that visual and that grandeur to make it hadley hall yeah you know and we all make kinds of adjustments i think that aren't historically accurate in order to tell a movie and so this is just one more of those and i think that it's telling you know that this you know bit of a unquote quote historical accuracy um, that some people seem to have a problem with. And I think that can be a bit telling. But, you know, most importantly, though, you know, these actors, um, 
who got their start a lot of the time in this specific genre. And I'm sure you can all think plenty, you know, of plays and, uh, you know, pieces of yeah. text over your head and act actors of colour have historically been shut out in the name of accurate representation. And as a result, they're shut out of the future upside of those opportunities as well. So I know that this genre is not going anywhere and as a lifelong fan of it, I don't want to. And when I, uh, I don't want it to go anywhere, sorry. And when I decided I wanted to make something in this genre, I knew that it was my job to hire the best available actors, work from there, find the best um, locations, the most beautiful sets, the big sweeping landscapes. And I, you know, and I did find find that in Ireland. So I hope that answers. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, no, no, definitely, yeah. It's interesting actually when you were talking there about like you know finding like the best available actors and the most beautiful sets and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I was trying to explain the film to my wife, and she loves Regency films as well. Can't get yeah. enough of them. Like, and I, she was saying like, "Oh yeah, that's kind of like My Fair Lady. It's kind of like you know the idea like, and it made me think of." other kind of Regency dramas and you know like obviously like My Fair Lady was then turned into She's All That and you know like there's that kind of back and forth between modern romantic comedies and Regency romantic comedies Um, when you were in pre-production or, or when you're even when you were in production I mean were there any were there any films that you watched or were there any kind of stories that you had in your mind that you were kind of thinking about? Yeah I mean I think you know one I think it's a very contemporary script and feeling and tone um and i think that's what i was drawn to initially was that sort of more like richard curtis-esque wit 90s rom-com vibe and that was sort of mashed up with a period film so actually i came at it more from the tone yeah and then had so much fun researching and re-watching all these great movies but yeah there was a couple that come to mind like actually pretty much everything that joe wright has made period yeah, drama wise actually became a huge inspiration but specifically pride and prejudice technically i have to say was a big inspiration mm -hmm. like less about i mean obviously there's parallels between suzanne's scripts and pride and prejudice it's like fan fiction to a degree yeah. um but i really studied um joe wright's pride and prejudice with the camera operator and cinematographer because i just think it's one of the most beautifully shot shot films and you know I was and I was really looking for that sort of film rustic timeless cinematography that I think that movie accomplished so well and also I fell back in love with Ang Lee's version of Sense and Sensibility and you know not even uh, Jane Austen necessarily I think I had a lot of fun doing the Oscar Wilde dig you know I was like mm -hmm re-watching an ideal husband and I fell in love with that all over again and you know I think it's such there's been so many amazingly talented people to work in these genres especially from you know our neck of the woods and you know it the joy of getting to deep dive in some of the greatest actors oldest work and greatest directors older work is is obviously is 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 a very fun day job let me put it that way yeah, no, I mean, like, Pride and Prejudice, like, I mean, some scenes in that, like, I they look like Turner paintings, like, you know, that kind of like, Absolutely incredible. stunning. And, you know, we had a very small budget, so I did my best. Yeah. That whole, you say paintings, that was our whole sort of motive. We said every frame, we want to be able to pause and for it to look like a painting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we look at a lot of um, Thomas Gainsborough work as well in prep you know all those like pops of color and things i really wanted to shoot the film on film but budget unfortunately um, i think brexit had a big part to play in it as well because it brexit had just gone through and the film uh labs and the the, the moving of the film was still being worked out yeah, for yeah, Europe. Yeah. so it just wasn't it we were it, we were too close to that otherwise i really would have pushed to shoot it on film as well i think it would have looked beautiful I mean, it, well, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I mean, like, you know, digital is at the place now where you can replicate nearly 90% of it, like, and it's, like, what, three times, four times less? Yeah. But, yeah. And by the way, like, you know, I think we all did, you know, especially Tony Miller and Alex Bambrilla and, you know, uh, Vanessa Taylor, who graded the movie, did a wonderful, you know, beautiful job with, and we got some beautiful lenses and cameras are amazing today. I just think it would have been fun as a young yeah. filmmaker knowing 
that if I was going to do something on film, that it probably should have been the one set in 1818. And who knows if I'll ever get that, you know, opportunity again. Yeah. But yeah, there's definitely pros and cons to both. But yeah. Interesting. And this is the final question because I'm getting the wrap up. Um, do you see yourself continuing on in a similar vein? And I mean, in the sense of like, you know, romantic dramedy, and maybe another region maybe not necessarily another regency film but like would you like to continue on in this vein i mean what do you think you want to do next do you have any ideas on it or are you just i do i think one of the big things for me has been you know when you do a period film as your first film obviously there's a lot of production and scale involved in that and i think you know having people believe enough in me to let me do you know do that and finance that as my first movie was amazing so I'm just really I know this is quite broad but I really am quite hungry to get even bigger in scale now you wow. know I think like I really would love to do you know um I wouldn't say period necessarily it could be contemporary it could be romantic it could be drama I know the things that I won't be good at but I'm really reading a lot and looking for something with that little bit of scale on my period drama, but also, um, you know, I think tonally, um, I think it's, it, if you're gonna spend years of your life making something to make something that the fundamental aim is to make people feel good, mm. which I also think another example of that, for example, more recently is Top Gun. It was such a feel good movie. Yeah. So really, Long story short, I would like to keep making feel good movies and hopefully one day with the scale of Top Gun. No, probably not as my <laughs> second movie, but maybe one day, years from now. Someone will write the script that we can put together like F twenty twos and Regency, you know, meet cutes. I can I can promise you this. Yeah. I'm done with Regency. I will never do Regency again, no. Why? I think because it was done it. I've done it and I and I loved it and it was amazing. And I think there's so many other time periods that would be so fun to explore. But I I've done my regency now. Yeah. So you know, I said that's the one thing I'm sure of. It won't be that. Hmm. Interesting. Because like, I mean, I mean, I, I totally get it. I mean, I, I would imagine like when you're in, de in in that enveloped in it for God knows however many years. Seven years. Yeah, like Jesus, you don't want to see another corset again. Mm. Okay, right. Um, we're getting the wrap up, so I'll leave it there. Thanks so much. No, thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. You thought to humiliate Malcolm, and you end up presenting him with the perfect wife, and that must sting. Wish me luck, old boy. I don't think you'll make it. It is time to show Malcolm your list. I do not think Mr. Malcolm is the man you think he is. Seems you have been deceiving me from the beginning. Love cannot be planned so carefully. It will stir things up a bit. That is part of its charm.